Well, good morning guys and welcome back to another beautiful, beautiful morning out with my camera. And uh, we're deep in a woodland that I was in in one of my previous videos actually today. And today this video is about my best advice or my top tips for woodland photography. So I don't consider myself to be a woodland photographer. Um, I don't think I'm that great. I think over the last couple of years I've kind of got to grips with it a little bit but I certainly wouldn't call myself very good at woodland photography um, I'd like to be a lot better um, and there's certain things that I want to improve on in the next couple of years um, but over the last couple of years I have learned a few things um, whilst trying to do it and it's a big challenge uh, woodland photography is a very very big challenge and everything you kind of learn with regards to composition is kind of thrown out the window to a certain extent when it comes to woodland photography and the biggest thing i think with regards to composition um, is the tripod and how it limits your composition so a lot of people get their tripod out straight away and they put it all up and they put it up to head height a bit like i've done today actually and um, they put their camera on top and they just take a shot uh, I was here luckily the other day and I took a shot actually of this tree and this set of trees so I kind of know this composition works and I've just been changing things around but the biggest mistake I think is just plonking your camera up on your tripod and I say this a lot with regards to all sorts of types of photography and seascapes and vistas and everything it does help to have it up to your eye and move it around and then you can really hone in on a composition that looks good and I think with regards to composition um, and leading lines and rule of thirds and that sort of thing it's kind of all thrown out the window to a certain extent with woodland photography. I think you kind of have to go with what I say, if it just looks right, take the shot. And I think that's kind of the road that I've been going down over the last couple of years and it seems to be working. I seem to be getting a couple of nice shots here and then. So I do have this image set up again. I did take it the other day and I think I preferred it the other day. I think it's the same tree. It kind of looks like the same tree. I think I'm in the same place. The composition kind of looks the same. Anyway, I'm gonna take it anyway, and I'm gonna show you my second piece of advice. And this is just luck of the draw, really. Um, woodland photography solely, I think, relies on conditions and mist and damp, wet woodlands and fog. And the reason why is you get the separation, you get the distance, you get the depth to the image. If you didn't have it, it's a bit like today, um, it's nowhere near as good as it was the other day and that's when I'm going to take the shot and I'll show you what it was like yesterday, the day before, sorry, and this morning and um, the difference is, 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 quite, is quite drastic actually and this can really, really change your images and your photographs. At the minute it's still quite dark, I've managed to turn the headlamp off now and uh, the ambient light is lifting slowly but I'm getting... 3.2 seconds at f4.5 and ISO 320. It's nice, it comes out good. There's a little bit of mist there, there's a little bit of depth. You can see the separation, uh, the colors are nice at the minute, the bracken and all the foliage underneath my feet. It's kind of like a dark orange and it kind of looks really, really nice. It does make for good photography and these trees are all simultaneous and they all look the same and it kind of just, it just works really well as a composition really. Also on ground like this when it's unstable and it's a little bit rocky, um, and a little bit spongy I like to put my tripod on spikes it kind of helps a lot more to dig in and also use timers on your camera so two second or ten second timers and that's exactly what I'm gonna do for this shot here and just try and stay as still as you can because your feet will move around obviously so it's a nice shot it's not it's not as good as the other day but I'll pop it up on the screen for you guys in a minute 
but conditions are, are everything when it comes to woodland photography. And it is kind of just luck of the draw, really. You can watch the weather apps, but it is kind of just luck. But it's a nice shot. image but you can see how the conditions are the biggest thing when it comes to getting really really powerful and impactful images and uh, it really helps as well to scout the location so if you know the area well and you've been up here in the daylight and you can see things and you can see certain trees that catch your eye and certain compositions that kind of work when you come back in these dark low light situations uh, you know exactly where you're going uh, and you know exactly what you're going to do and what you're going to shoot and how you're going to frame things up. And scouting is a big part of landscape photography. Uh, we often find ourselves out in ambient light and dark light and um, trying to find new compositions and things that work is very, very difficult um, if you don't know where you are. And luckily this woodland is literally on my doorstep. It's about five minutes from my house. I walk up here quite a lot. Uh, I mountain bike up here every now and again and I know the area reasonably well. Um, but recently started just going out in the daytime and looking for certain trees and certain compositions that kind of catch my eye and then coming back to those situations in the right conditions and I talk about conditions again because they are absolutely vital and also when it comes to conditions it's always good to pack a waterproof coat or something like that in your bag because when you're doing woodland photography and you're hunting for these certain conditions that can come and catch you off guard sometimes and uh, I've been caught out and got very wet in the past so I try to always carry a waterproof coat in my bag now as well just in case so today I've got another one just in my bag just in case uh, that's another little lesson I've learned over the years. Let's crack on, see if I can find anything else. I don't think we're going to get any more photography this morning. It's kind of lifting completely now, but I can still show you what I got the other day. Let's show you that. So you might have seen this tree on my social media the other day. It caught my eye and as you can see it's pretty gnarly. And that's something else I kind of look for when it comes to woodland photography is very odd and gnarly. I like to use the word gnarly. Gnarly looking trees. Um, let's just put you there. And you can see I titled this shot, I'll show you the shot again in a minute on screen. But I titled this shot Arachnid. Because it looks like a spider. It's just very fierce and very dominant and in and amongst all these straight pines this thing stands out. I think it's a beech tree and as you can see it really is just fascinating to look at. Uh, now conditions wise today is, is not good. Uh, I got it the other day, I got the shot and I'm really really happy with the shot the other day. But I'm always on the lookout for trees that kind of look different in their situations amongst the other trees and you kind of have to try and find some sort of connection and almost build a story uh, within the trees and that really helps you envision compositions. So this tree stood out to me straight away and then was the task of me trying to compose it into an image and luckily the other morning I had the right conditions and everything kind of fell into place and I got a really really nice shot. It's massive isn't it? It's humongous. And as you can see, it just dominates this whole area. Uh, there's a few other beech trees like it, just behind you. This one just stands out um, from amongst all the other ones. And then couple that against the pines that are all singular and straight. It just looks amazing. And it can make for a wonderful, wonderful photograph if you compose it right. And another thing I've learned recently or since having this camera really, maybe in about the last year or so, is crop previews. So your camera might not have crop previews, um, but if you're lucky enough to have it, it can really, really be handy 
um, in woodland scenarios. Now, when I shoot woodland photography, I say I like certain crops most of the time. I like a two by one crop, so like a letterbox crop, nice and wide and not very tall. And this can help eliminate skies if you've got very, very bright skies in your scenes. Um, I also like square crops, and this is what drew me to this shot the other day. Now, I did focus stack this image. I'll pop it up on screen for you guys in a moment. Um, I took maybe four or five photos uh, incrementally from here all the way through to the tree and that then gave me focus from really close down right next to my lens all the way through to the tree. But it only really worked for a square. I think I shot it as a 4x5 or a 3x2 uh, to start off with but when I selected the square crop on my, on my camera it gave me a little square on the back of my viewfinder and that helped me envision a composition even more and it really helped me fine tune it so that when I got back to the editing software I knew exactly what I was going for and that can really help so if you don't have it maybe just try and envision a square or just try and envision a, a two by one crop have a little look on Lightroom and put like a two by one crop on your image beforehand and see if you can kind of envision that in your shots I see a lot of people just do the standard three by two uh, that your camera kind of produces uh, and upload those shots all the time and that can be very limiting sometimes obviously sometimes it's perfect and it works really well uh, but a lot of people don't crop or use the ability to crop their images and cropping is one of the most powerfulest tools when it comes to composition so it's a pretty epic tree isn't it and as you can see behind me right next to it are some amazing beech trees some more amazing beech trees and they do look fantastic and they look out of place in and amongst the other trees and it can make for just wonderful images so so i didn't just stumble across this tree the other morning when i was out in the dark i i knew it was here i knew i wanted to come back and i knew i wanted to get a shot of it but the conditions had to be right and i'm talking about conditions a lot because they are absolutely vital um, in this type of photography as you can see this morning i'm not getting any images uh, the conditions aren't right, there's no depth, there's no separation, everything kind of just blurs into one and that's the problem with conditions when it comes to woodland photography. Um, and I did briefly touch on scouting earlier on but I scouted this tree a couple of weeks ago and I knew it was here and I knew I wanted to get a shot of it. Um, and like I said I mountain bike up here so I know the area quite well but it really helps to just go for a walk in the day or in situations like this when it's just not actually good for photography and just bookmark places and bookmark shots that are going to work in the future um, and it could be the near future it could be a couple of days a couple of weeks or it could be a couple of years until you get it right but at least you know it's there and the other great thing about woodland photography and don't take this the wrong way is you don't know where I am so if I do find something special, or if you find something special when you're out and about, keep it to yourself, because that makes it even more special. Now it sounds a little bit selfish, but nobody knows where this tree is, only I know where it is, and if someone else stumbles across it, they could get a lovely shot too. But woodland photography is a lot more personal, you can connect yourself to the woodland, you can create images that are personal to you, and that's where it really brings out the, the inner artist in you. We're all artists really, we're photographers, but we're artists really. We create images out of situations that are just here all the time, and everything is unique to us this may look amazing to me and it may look really really good to me printed on paper and i'd love to hang this on my wall because i just love the shot but some of you out there might think no i don't like it it's not me and that's the great thing about it art is subjective and it's whatever you think is right and that's what i love about woodland photography as well is it's special and it's unique and yeah keep those hidden gems to yourself because they can make really lovely images and they're unique to you and that's the biggest thing it's unique to you See, I remember when I was younger, I used to hate being around trees. I used to find them really, really scary. And uh, yeah, I had quite a big fear of them really when I was younger, but I just find now it's just so relaxing and so peaceful. And, and there's something really intimate about being in and amongst these massive trees. And they all can tell a story. They can all tell you a story or two if they wanted to. And it's just, that's our job as a photographer to try and bring that across in a photograph and I always like to try and tell a story within a photograph and it just makes it more meaningful and impactful so there's probably not going to be any more photography 
uh, this morning, but it's not a wasted trip. Um, I'm still going to continue to walk around, try and find new trees, try and find new compositions and things that work for the next time. And if you do go out and you get conditions like this, when the mist just suddenly lifts and disappears, uh, that's okay. Just bookmark them, still walk around, still get your camera out and still try and compose images and take shots. You know, you might get shots, you might still get images that work for you. Um, you might not need the conditions in those shots that you're taking. Um, but it's not a wasted trip, just use it as, as just stepping stones for when you do get that image and you do get the right conditions and you come back and you get exactly what you want. And that's what makes it really good about woodland photography is it's very personal. So I'm going to wrap this one up here. I'm going to walk around, see if I can find any more potential images for the future and hopefully you have learned something today. Um, sorry about the photography, but uh, hopefully you can take away something from uh, this video and put it into practice into your photography. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do consider clicking subscribe below. Give us a like, tell us what you think down in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one.